Hello game makers, this is Game Maker Rob and today's episode we finally get around to text boxes. Uh, it covers things like uh, battle messages, talking to NPCs, casting spells from the world outside of battles, that kind of thing. Uh, all done from within one text object. Um, it sounds like we have to change a lot of things but honestly we don't have to, it's mainly just creating the text box itself. But anyway, um, you've waited long enough, let's get started. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I'm sorry it's uh, taken me so long to uh, upload this video. I've been working on the text system for a couple of weeks now. Um, hopefully, uh, you'll think it's it's decent though. I've tried to iron out as many kinks and bugs as I can. There's a few things I want to add to it, but for the most part, it's a half decent system. Um, I think most people will be happy with it as it is for now. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to make a test room and we're going to uh, create a text object inside there uh, just to make sure that it runs properly. So if you uh, right click on rooms here, then create room and I've just called mine RM test, uh, then create an object, call it OBJ text and add it into the room. And then we need to drag this room right to the very top. So it's the first room that loads. And then inside the create event of OBJ text, we're going to add these variables. Uh, loaded string. So uh, whenever someone talks or something happens in the battle, loaded string is going to be added to. So I'm going to start off with this string for now. Uh, actually, let me let me just. copy and paste a few times uh, one thing I'm going to mention so uh, you see these at symbols what this is doing is telling the text to break to a new line um, I need to have a space between the end of the last sentence and the start of the new one uh, this will get deleted or the this bit will get deleted by the text system um, and then Barry will be on the new line and there'll be no space before his, his name. Um, this is just how I decided to, to have new lines because you don't always want a block of text. You might want to have new lines. Um, I didn't add uh, these symbols to the NPC text, but what I did do is add them into the scripts. So uh, all the battle messages start on a new line. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard to add this to... Uh, NPC text as well should work in exactly the same way. So uh, max characters per line. Um, how many characters do you want to fit on a line, including spaces? Uh, max lines. How many lines do you want max? I've been keeping mine at four for now. You can have it. Have, have as many or as few as you like, though. It should work. It should work as intended. Uh, current line. This will go from zero until three because max lines is four. Um, characters in line. Uh, this is how many characters are in the current line. Once it, what, how it's going to work. Uh, I, I've, I watched, um, I've been looking at different text systems for over a year now, uh, trying to improve my own text system abilities. Um, Heartbeast has a half decent one and the way he um, does checks is whenever there's a space then there's going to be a new word so he checks whether that word is going to be is going to fit on the line and then if it is if it is going to fit then he just adds that text otherwise uh, we break to a new line and then current line will increase uh, cars in line get set to zero and then it just goes on from there Visible string is what we have actually drawn onto the screen. Uh, the point of visible string is to eventually be the same as loaded string. Um, we, we've got an array called a text. It's going to have four entries because max lines is four. Um, and visible string is going to be breaking, broken uh, into these four different entries. Uh, waiting for player input. So whenever we get to the last entry and the last entry is full we're going to wait for the player to press space or ok whatever and when he does then all these entries will get deleted and reset 
and then visible string will start to write into the, the topmost one, zero. Uh, talk speeds, how fast are we writing characters to the screen? Um, you can change this uh, whenever you like. So say for example, you want an NPC to talk quicker than others, you can do that. Um, the way I've got it set up though is I just have my NPCs talking at the same speed and I have battle messages to be really fast and uh, the player menu, menu to be a little slower and the uh, text messages from NPCs are the slowest. Uh, talk timer just uh, runs until talk speeds and then a new letter is added and checked. Blink image, this is just so we can have a blinking cursor. Uh, play sounds, so you might not want to hear the da 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 on every letter um, in some situations, so you can set this to true or false. Uh, buffer is the space between the lines of text. Um, and we also, we can display the text in the top or the bottom. So I'm using the top for talking to NPCs and the bottom for the battle mainly. I think the player menu is in the bottom as well. Uh, ready, so is the object ready to start typing or not? And uh, display just uh, holds whether it's drawing in the top or the bottom. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the meat and bones of it. We're gonna go into the step event and uh, we need this region uh, just because we don't have OBJ in it. We need this just for now. Uh, when the text object is going to be in the actual room, then we are not going to need this. Uh, so not ready. So originally, the text object was going to just be created and uh, destroyed whenever it was needed. And then I decided, you know, just to make it a persistent object and then just to clear the variables. Um, so this is a holdover from when it was being destroyed and recreated. Uh, we still do need to set up start X and start Y though. So uh, just copy this if you will for now. And then uh, ready to display text. This is uh, the, the major part. I'm just uh, put as much as I can into regions. Right, so if ready is true, which it would, would be, um, if we are not waiting for player input, then run talk timer. Um, before we actually go any further, let me just uh, show you the sounds that I've got. So I've got um, one sound for text and one sound for uh, waiting for player. I will put those in the uh, link. I've got a, I've got a folder on Dropbox with. Uh, sounds and, and sprites and stuff, I'll put those there for you to listen to. Um, you're, you're not going to be able to hear it on this recording because of my uh, settings. Um, and then there's also a sprite, isn't there? Yeah, there. So, uh, SPR message blink. I just copied it basically from uh, Target Arrow. And then I have the origin point in the top left. Whereas target arrow is bottom center. So all I'm doing really is just changing the origin point. And that's what I'm using to, to blink. Okay, so now we've got that. If uh, talk timer is greater than or equal to talk speed and waiting for player import is false. Um, if our visible string, so uh, this is all the characters that we've drawn so far. If it doesn't equal loaded string, then we're going to run all of this code or this. So we want to know uh, the position of the next character that we need. And we're going to get that by getting the size of visible string. String length returns the number of characters. So if there are two characters in visible string, then pause would return two. But because we want to be getting the third letter, we're going to add one to it to make it three. And then we're going to say next car equals string car at loaded string pause. So basically getting the third character of loaded string, whatever it is. Uh, the first two characters of these two should be the same as well. Uh, we're going to check for the first word of line. So... Um, 
characters in line will be zero if we haven't added any characters to a, a new line. Um, if there's a space at the start, then we want to get rid of it. That's what this is going to do. So loaded string equals string delete loaded string pause, which is the new the latest character one. So if it was um, if the if visible string was it and then the next character was a space uh, on on a on a new line, then it would get deleted because of that. And then because we've deleted our character, we want to set next character to a new one. So before this happened, uh, well, sorry, um, when this happens, next character is a space. So we've already delete, deleted the space. We want to get a new character. If the next character is a space and cars in line is not zero, then we're going to find the length of the word. So uh, this is what I was talking about, uh, where HeartBeast uses uh, spaces to say, okay, there's going to be a new, a new word coming up. And uh, that's kind of similar thing we're going to do here. Um, I didn't copy any of his code. I just, um, it's been a while since I watched his video. I just kind of used that basic concept to say, okay, space equals, there's going to be a new word. So we're going to check loaded string until we find a space. Uh, we, we are then going to know the length of the next word. So let me explain these three variables. So uh, we'll do this one first. Letter of a word equals string car at loaded string. String length visible string plus count. Uh, might sound like double dutch, but string length of visible string uh, is going to equal number like. So if there's three characters in it, then it's going to equal three. Uh, why are we doing plus count? Because count's going to equal two. If we had a word and then, so we had like a word and then next car was going to equal this space. We want to know what this character is. So that's why count equals two. That's why we're adding it to visible string because we want to know what comes after the space. Uh, future cars in line, this is going to track um, how, so We've got a variable called cars in line, characters in the line, um, and we only want to have so many per line before we start a new line. Um, future cars in line is going to track uh, how long this new word would be if we added it to the line. Say, for example, we're at, we're at 17 characters and the max is 20, and we have a four or five letter word, then we're going to start a new line. If we have a two letter word, then it's going to fit, it's going to, it's, there's going to be a space for the 18, 18th character and then two letters will be 20, so it's going to be an exact fit. We're going to use a while loop, this bit here. So while it's not a space, so we should still be in a word while it's not a space. Um, we also need to check for a line break, so if this character is in the text, it's going to perform a line break. Uh, this is going to delete this character. That's what this does. And we want to force new lines, so we're going to set future characters in line to a thousand. And then the code here that checks future lines is going to definitely run because he's, you know, uh, you're not going to want a thousand characters in the line. So after this bit, regardless of whether this is a break or not. We're going to increase future lot characters in line. We're going to get the next letter of the word and we're going to increase the count. And then we want to make sure also that we don't get to the end of loaded string. So this is what this is going to check. So if visible string plus if the length of visible string plus count is greater than or equal to the length of the loaded string, then break out of this loop. So here we're going to check to see if we need a new line. Uh, we do need a new line if future characters in line is greater than max characters in line. So if future cars is greater than max cars, then we need a new line. Um, we want to make sure we don't start with a space. So that's what this is going to do. Uh, if you remember, now we haven't changed pause 
So it's this bit. And if the position of the next character was a space, then all this would have won, run. And then we would have found out we needed a new line. So pause is still going to point to the position of the space before the word that we just checked. So that's why we're using it there. Uh, go to new line if we are not at max lines. So if current line plus one is less than max lines, we're just going to go to the next line. Uh, we want to reset the characters in line so they can track the new line. Um, and next character is still a space because we haven't actually changed it. So we're going to get the next. Yeah, because we've deleted uh, space, we want to get the next character that came after the space. And this is going to be the first letter of the first word on the new line. That's what, that's what this is going to return. If we are at the maximum lines, so if current line equals max line minus one, then we need to wait for player input. So all four lines are going to be full and we're just going to wait for them to press OK. And none of the rest of this code is really going to run after that. Uh, so let me just... Let me just minimize this region here. And then also this region here. So if next character equals a space, otherwise uh, we're going to check for another break. Uh, this is in case the first, uh, this is in case we're on the first line and the first character is a break. That's what this is going to be for. Or the first character of loaded string. All we're doing is we're just deleting the break. That's what it's for. So why why is this needed? Because um, the way that I added the breaks is inside the scripts, like healing uh, and sleep, poison, that kind of thing. Um, I didn't want to have to worry about checking whether it's the first line, so I just did that here. I just took care of it inside the script, uh, inside the text object. Sorry. So. After the line break, let's minimize that, uh, minimize that. So where are we? So we're still within uh, if visible string is not equal to loaded string. And uh, if waiting for player input is false. So this is what will happen most of the time. It's just going to be drawing character per character. We're going to add a new, we're going to increase the uh, character counter for that particular line. We're going to add next character to visible string and we're going to add that character also to the uh, current line in the array. You might w wonder why uh, we are adding next character twice because I use visible string to find out how far along loaded string that I've gone. Um, if I didn't have it, I'd need to keep adding um, all the characters within the array. And also what happened, what would happen if the array was cleared, which happens when it gets full. I'm not going to know how far along I've gone. So that's what I use it for really. Um, play sound. So we only want to play a sound on a letter or a digit. So a number or a letter. So letter check is going to grab any letters or digits out of next character. Next character is only going to hold one character in the first place. So if next character is anything other than a letter or a number, letter to check is going to equal nothing, like an empty string. But as long as letter to, letter to check doesn't equal an empty string and we want to play a sound, then play the sound. Uh, and after we have done all of this, we want to reset talk timer to zero so we can do the whole thing again after a, a couple of steps or so. Uh, if we are waiting for play input to be true, then we want to run the blink animation. Uh, there's only two sprites. I don't think I showed you. Sorry. Let me, let me show you again. So we've got uh, the actual arrow and then a blank index so this is what causes the blink effect
If blink image is greater than or equal to sprite get number, which returns the number of Im images in the index, it's going to be zero or, or one, then blink image equals zero. Uh, we're going to be using this variable to draw the index of SBR message blink, by the way. Um, you'll see that in the draw event, the draw GUI event. So if we press OK, then set waiting for player to input to be false. Uh, set talk timer to talk speed, uh, just so it starts straight away. There's no delay. Clear all the lines. So we're going to reset all the text inside the array to nothing. Um, we don't need that. Don't know why I did that in. Well, I do know. It's just I didn't I didn't take it out after I changed things. Um, reset characters in line. Reset current line. Reset timer. Uh, and if we're playing a sound, we want to play a sound that we uh, have for the player pressing it. And that's it. I'm just gonna go through this bit slowly with the regions closed, just so you can see how all the um, curly brackets should be okay now let's get into the draw GUI event let's get rid of some of this stuff first okay so if ready is true and visible string is not equal to nothing so um, after someone has finished talking um, or the play moves away something like that we're going to reset everything to uh, back there it was uh, i'm just using visible string um, to check to see whether that's the case and um, we're only going to be drawing uh, the text box in the text if visible string is anything other than nothing so uh, we're going to draw a text box based on our uh, x1 y1 x2 y2 stats that we had in the step event in this bit here so we want to draw a set color black draw the rectangle draw a set color white draw the outline that's what this does then we also want to draw the text so set the font um, if you want to have the same font as me i have i'm using mana space it's a mono spaced font so all the letters um, cover the same space useful for, th for things like this uh, i have and i have it as a size of 12. draw set h line in the left from the top drawn in white and then this just goes through the array and draws the text in the array and this well this is getting the coordinate for the message x um, if we're waiting for input from the player then draw the arrow a blink image is going to give us the index and that should be it so once you have that, make sure the uh, text objects in the room, make sure you've got some kind of text like this, you know, some kind of example text and then run the game. There you go. And it runs twice because I've got the text in there twice. If we uh, change display to top, oops, there we go, like that, and run the game again, then that text is going to get drawn from the top as well as the text box.
and there you go so the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to incorporate this into our game now okay so in the step region of the text object you can go ahead and comment out uh, you can go ahead and comment out the testing region we don't need it i forgot to say uh, make text object persistent make sure this box is ticked and then we are going to go into obj init and the create event and then we're going to create the text object here like so and then we can just move our test room back down to the bottom we don't need that anymore we're going to have a few scripts for our text object uh, the first one I think we should do is this one reset text box so we're going to do a for loop it's going to set all the text to nothing and it's going to reset these variables to nothing as well or relevant nothing anyway we're going to be calling this script uh, from within the other scripts and from different objects as well depending on what we need uh, this is because the text object is persistent uh, we, we need to make sure we're clearing the stuff properly that's what it's for really so uh, create text box uh, we're not actually creating it we're just updating variables so how this is going to work is whenever we go into a battle or we start a conversation something like that uh, this we're going to use this script we're going to pass the maximum number of lines so you can have different numbers of, of lines in battles and different number of lines in uh, in conversations uh, the maximum characters per line again how you know whatever you want uh, talk speed uh, how fast uh, each character is going to appear on the screen so zero uh, is the smallest number and that's going to be really fast i use that for battles and then play sounds whether we want to play sounds or not uh, i forgot to add display so do we want it to be in the top or the bottom okay so um these are our five variables don't need this and then we're just going to update our text object with those variables uh, and then first reset them before we do that and then scr end conversation tidy this up so this is just for talking to npcs really uh, we're going to clear the relevant variables in obj text and then with the player set the talking variable to false if the npc still exists set their talking to false and set their sprite index to last sprite Okay, so now we are going to sort out the step event of the player object. So inside the talking region, uh, I believe I did this line, which goes up to here, just to make sure that uh, there is actually an NPC. That's what it's for. And then we also change this. We're going to start uh, text counter as text start minus one because um, we're going to increase it straight away I had to mess around with uh, how some of these things are integrated with each other just to make the text system work uh, and then here we update the text object to what we want and we took this out because it was pretty useless really so once you've got that let me just minimize it so you can see a bit better what else goes on so if talking is false we're going to start a conversation talking should now be true so this is going to run within the same pressed ok that this did so if talking equals true uh, go to next message and then shopkeeper we added the end conversation script here and we also reset text to check if we don't do that then we end up with this character on a line so it's just a bug fix really not very elegant but it works and then innkeeper 
we added end conversation here as well. And we added this line. I can ignore that now. So, minimize this. If text counter is less than text end, otherwise we're at the end of the conversation, we're gonna make sure the string length of visible string and loaded string is the same. And if they are, then end the conversation. Uh, what this is for is to stop premature, prematurely ending conversations. Uh, a couple of issues are with the shopkeeper and the innkeeper. Uh, you can uh, stop the text box before it's finished, but for everything else, it plays out to the end. Then, still within talking, if we're moving away from the NPC, uh, we don't need all of this. Uh, I've have we done end conversation? Yeah. So end conversation takes care of all the player and NPC variables. So we can just delete all this. And just have the, uh, the script there. We're going to use it a few times. It's quite useful. Then in menu. So this is for when the player is casting spells. Uh, we add here so if we if we close down the menu we just want to reset the text object so it doesn't just display anymore and then if we press cancel we want to reset the text object regardless of what's happening uh, and that should be it for the step event if we go into the draw GUI we want to get rid of the whole talking region because uh, the text object is taking care of this now. So this is no longer needed. If we're going to OBJ goodnight, I think we also use the, uh, yeah, so we just comment this bit out and we're going to use SCR end conversation to do the same job. So there we go. Uh, I've forgotten to update this. I'll, I'll do this for next time. It's just a few a few things to tidy up, but uh, that's the only change we really need to make in OBJ Goodnight. Okay, so we are going to go into the battle object now and the create event. Uh, we have a new thing here called letters. What this is for is for is to distinguish between the different monsters. So if there's four slimes and uh, one of them hits you or one of them is damaged, well, which one is it? You know, it's just a way to keep track of it. Uh, limitations of it right now is that if you have more than one group of monsters, that is the same monster. So two groups of green slimes, then uh, they you're going to have two groups of A, B, C and D because it doesn't uh, track the type of monster between groups, but hopefully this should give you an idea of uh, what to do. It wouldn't be too hard to uh, do like a with statement. Anyway, I digress. Let's just get on with this. Uh, step event. So inside the initialized battle region, we are in the create monster region and we're just going to add a letter to the monster's name. Uh, what letter gets added depends on the monster variable. So that's how we do it. Quite st straightforward. Minimize that. And then we've got a new region, create object text, just pass some variables to it. So we're not going to be playing sound in the battle. We're going to be displaying it at the bottom and it's going to be the fastest speed we can go, which is zero. Uh, we no longer need text to display or visible string because the text object is going to be doing all the work. 
so we can get rid of the typewriter region as well because of that comment it out um, this line has been replaced by this line so we're just checking to make sure the uh, length of visible string is the same as loaded string and um, before we go to the next actor uh, this will stop us cut cutting off uh, messages before they've been typed in all stoppers from you know all the mon monsters having a go before we've even seen the text that's what this is for then we are in the next actor region still and here uh, where we are checking for party death to get rid of this bit and change it to this so oh it should be this i i was using the uh percentage sign previously okay basically anywhere where we have visible string and text is to display we're going to replace it something something like this that's all we're going to do so we're in check status now You can probably make your job faster if you do a search. Oops. Control F, text display, and then go to it one, one at a time. Um, I'm just going to go through mine bit by bit, though, just to make sure I don't miss anything out. So we're in pressed OK main region. Oops. and I found a bug uh, probably from last time with the inventory and magic for, for casting spells uh, so when we cast a spell if one of these uh, one of these two variables is true we weren't setting them to false so that's what this is going to do uh, why do we need to do this? Because um, with the new tech system, and probably before that, actually, we could do, we could press up, down, left, and right, and it would still let us target something. So uh, it wasn't really the desired effect that we wanted. Same for magic. Um, in the cast spell on a target region, we just want to set choose target, choose hero to false. And then here's another one, here's another line to change. And we didn't need this for anything really, because it just clears everything. Our text object will take care of this. So we've added uh, comparison again of visible string and loaded string yeah, that what this is for um, it doesn't work 100% it's uh, supposed to stop us ending the battle before all the text is done it does work but uh, we're adding text inside the next actor region uh, for example uh, party died or you were victorious and uh, we're not displaying that um, next time I'll, I'll have that sorted out but for this video um, we're going to have that bug for now. And at the very bottom of our battle over region, we just want to reset the text box to get rid, get rid of it. 
I think that's pretty much it for the step event for the battle object. So we're going now into the draw GUI end. No, begin, sorry. Draw GUI begin. Again, with the text region, we don't need it. We can just comment it out because the text object is going to be handling this from now on. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is to update our scripts. So, uh, SCR heal. So inside SCR heal, um, we're replacing these lines with these lines. Uh, I also needed needed to add this line here um, to stop a crash from HP healed trying to be read when it hadn't been set. Uh, and again, we've, we're adding the text to load this string. SCR magic damage, commenting this out, adding this, uh, same here. SCR exits, comment this out, add this here, uh, adding this as well. Uh, we're adding this here because it's relevant for this or this. So we're just saving ourselves a line by adding it here. Why do we add it here in the for loop? Because um, if there's five monsters and we're targeting, you know, five monsters with a, with a spell, we want to have a new line for every monster. So it has to be within the for loop that's being done. That's why that's there. So return, adding this here, getting rid of this, adding this and adding this. Uh, I'm thinking whether to add a new line or not. I don't. I don't think we need to. I'm gonna leave it as it is for now. Poison. Getting rid of this. Adding this here. I haven't added any text for casting poison from the play menu, so nothing. All that happens is you lose uh, mana points right now something else i can look at for next time and ser sleep get rid of this and add this and it's the same as uh, as poison so it only shows up inside battle uh, i think that's it i think that's it um let's run the game make sure everything works properly oh uh, one thing I forgot to do is we don't want to start with any text. So go into the create event of obj text and just set loaded string to nothing like that. And now let's run the game again. That's better. So uh, let's talk to a few people. Pressing space as often as I can, just to like a spam test. Let's talk to the shopkeeper. So here you can, this is one of the bugs I was talking about. You can, if you press space while he's talking, you can just skip ahead to it. Um, I don't think that's too bad because the shopkeeper doesn't really say anything too exciting. Um, and you can't skip what the um, what the NPCs say unless you walk away from them. So hopefully you won't miss any kind of important information uh, from the NPCs. So it's not too huge of a problem. It's just worth bearing in mind. And this is the innkeeper. It seems to work okay. So now uh, let's try and cast a spell. Cast heal on Barry. And you can see the speed 
if that is is a is a lot better um that's because a lot faster sorry that's because we are setting uh, a lower number for that part so let's go outside now have a battle Uh, we're going to use a wand from Barry. Uh, the other problem, as you can see, is uh, I'm probably going to move the hero stats to the top middle or something because the text box is just drawing over them right now. I could always change where it's displayed, but um, the top middle part of the screen isn't really doing anything, so I can just move the hero stats there. So this is casting a spell on multiple slimes, so... No one's taking their turn because we're still re reading messages. Let's just finish them off. I won't mind adding uh, some messages to say people have died or it's people are taking their turn because that's that kind of thing we can add now. We've got that functionality. That was bad. So now we would normally get a message to say that we've won, but we don't because uh, we're not accessing the next actor region. That's something I will fix for next time, but. Uh, there we go, uh, a text box system which uh, covers battles, play menu um, and talking to, to NPCs just within one object. Um, hopefully that will work better for you guys but I will catch you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>